what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his own soul? God is ready to break every gate of brass that the devil has put to ensure that he remains in slavery. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us.
the father of Anthony Sogon, Nigerian, the Holy Man of God, the righteous man of God. And I know that, I know that. With the standing of the sun, I bring the light of the Thank you very much. May we regain our seats. I want to thank our senior pastor of this local church. Thank the deacons of the church. Thank the assistant pastors. Thank our pastor's wife. And thank everyone who has been part of this plan to invite me to this place. Yes, chapter 6. Second Corinthians chapter 6. In the current in Cowboy CC. Bidona Mokwiri na no. Unu nandine kwege kwe. Eko kotala umunu. Unu nandine kwege kwe. Eko kotala umunu. Nina unu na hadi iche. Unu na hadi iche. Nina ole nkeko. Ezio Mume na ime bi wune keko Mabole unweko ihe na chichiri ne unweko Ozo ole unweko otu olu kres na beda di ne unweko Mabu ole oke onye kwere kwe na onye ne kwere kwe ne kerita Ozo, ole nkweko ulon sonke chineke na arusi ne kweko. Ni nanyo wanyi bo ulon sonke chineke dindu. Dika chineke kurusi, nge bini meha, nge jeri kwa ni meha, nge bukwa chineke nke ha. Ha weha, nge bukwa ndi nke mu. Ni nka, sinu ne titi hapota. Guzo kwa ni iche Kone wa ikuru Unu eme tu kwa la Ine na diro cha aka Mo uwe mga boba taku unu Buru kwa Buru kwa unu nna Unu wa unu Ga bu kwa ram Umu ndi ikom Na umu ndi inyo Kone wa ikuru Nke purimi heni le Ya mere, isa samo kumbu ya mere Ndi mwananya Eba inwere mkwandia Kanyi sacha po mwanyi Mmeru ni ile Nke nkaro na nke mwo Ne mezu idi nso Ne guchineke Biko dika mkuru Our father we are grateful unto you today We thank you very much we have enjoyed your presence. We continue to enjoy your presence. And we pray your blessings will continue to multiply upon us all the days of our lives. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I was invited and told about Father's blessings. I saw the publication in Facebook 
and it was saying father's blessings I got in here today I saw many of us hanging something on our clothes I looked at it and it said father's blessings I have seen so many people talk about father's blessings I've observed that there have been crusades on father's blessings I have seen banners, I have seen posters, I have seen handbills on Father's blessings. Fortunately for me, I have not been privileged to listen to anyone ministering on Father's blessings. Fortunately. This is the first time in my 42 years of ministry now that I'll be talking about Father's blessings. This is the very first time. Everyone called of God has his ministry. When God calls a man, he gives a man a particular ministry. Everyone God has ever called. When God called Abraham, there was a purpose for the call of Abraham. When God called Moses, there was a purpose. The purpose for which God called Moses was not the purpose for which he called Abraham. When God raised Joshua, it was different from what God was doing with Moses. It was completely different. And when God began to raise the judges, as you know, when he raised Gideon, there was a purpose. When he raised Jephthah, there was another purpose. When he raised Samson, there was a purpose. When he raised Deborah, there was a purpose. When God raised Samuel, you know why he raised Samuel. When he raised David, it was a different purpose. So all down until you got to John the Baptizer, he was raised specially to introduce the Lord. And by the time Jesus started calling the disciples, he had a purpose. When it was time to minister to the Jews, there was somebody specially raised. When it was time to minister to the Gentiles, God raised another person. He always will raise. And I stand behind the pulpit today. Why am I saying all this? My name is not Benjamin Ome Carlo. I'm not Benjamin Ome Carlo. I'm not uh, Prince K. Maba. I'm not Dr. Silva. Uh, my name is not Oba Onyije. And I came with my friend. Reverend Dr. J. N. G. Okafo, that's his name. He has his ministry. It's not mine. If you had given this topic to any of them, they will minister as per their own ministry. And when you listen to them, if you are used to their ministry, you say, oh, this is Dr. Silva ministering on this topic. Um, this is Dr. Obaunije ministering. This is Reverend Dr. Oka for ministering. I am Pastor Eji Keme Eji. I am ministering. So listen to my approach to Father's blessings. If you want another approach, call Dr. Silva another day. The greatest father we have ever had and we shall ever have is God. God. He is the father. And if you want blessing from father, I want you to look up to God. He is the real father. He is the one to bless you. There's a sense in which every pastor is a father. There's a sense, of course, in which 
we know we have earthly fathers our physical fathers but the real father is God the creator of heaven and earth and all that is in it the one who made us in his own image and likeness the giver of life the sustainer of life the one who protects the one who defends the one who delivers the one who overshadows us keeps us under the everlasting arms leads us out and brings us in fights our battles for us in fact takes over the battle and says they are his own and begins to fight fight all the forces of darkness all principalities and powers all spiritual wickedness in high places whatever they call themselves they disappear into nothingness when our father appears so let's look at this our father i'm interested in him today when he made our first parents his intention was to bless them but they missed the blessing in the garden of eden and you know why it's not just because they ate the fruit of the tree it's because they decided for reasons best known to them that god was no longer their father if god had been their father then what the prophet Malachi said should have been ringing in their ears. If I am your father, where is the honor due me? Where is the honor? But the devil came and spoke to them. And they preferred what the devil was saying against what God had said. There was no honor for God. There was no respect. They were disobedient. They rebelled against God. They were self-willed. They allied with the devil, the enemy of our souls. They were saying that God did not know what he was doing. They rejected the wisdom of God. They rejected the love of God. They rejected the message of God. They clung to what the devil had for them. And somebody is saying Father's blessing. You cannot get Father's blessing when you are living in disobedience to the word of God. Nobody can. Nobody who rebels against God by rejecting the scriptures, any portion of the scripture, if you've rejected it, don't be talking of father's blessing that would be a deceit any pastor who tells you about father's blessings when you know you are rebelling against god he himself is a deceiver he shouldn't tell you that he should call you back he should tell you if you know you want god to bless you obey do his good will he abides with us still and with all who we trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey if you are the general superintendent if you are our district superintendent 
If you are a member of our presbytery in our district or any of the 129 units, if you are the senior pastor of this church or the assistant pastor or a deacon of this church, if you are a deaconess here or you are the leader of the men or women, what does it matter? Once you are living a life of disobedience and stubbornness and rebellion against the word of God, you will receive no blessing from heaven. Sometimes people receive the crumbs that fall from the table, but not the real deal. Nobody who is living in disobedience and stubbornness and rebellion, nobody will receive the blessing from our Father in heaven. Adam and Eve created a problem for themselves and they also created a problem for their offspring and we are battling with that problem up to today and the whole world is in total disarray today it started from the Garden of Eden when eventually they got their own children they named the first one Cain and he said in chapter 4 verse 1 here I have acquired a man from the Lord. That's the meaning of Cain. A man. I've gotten a man from the Lord. They got another one and named him Abel. And you should know that Cain should receive the blessing as the firstborn. There will also be blessing for Abel. But Cain could not receive the blessing. He was the firstborn, but he could not receive the blessing. Why? Cain was filled with hatred. And the Bible tells us in 1 John that he that hates his brother is a murderer. And that we know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So Cain was filled with hatred. Cain was filled with bitterness. Cain had a murderous spirit. And when a man is filled with hatred and bitterness and murder, he cannot receive Father's blessing. He has blocked himself out. When a man is filled with hatred and bitterness and murder, he cannot receive Father's blessing. And if the same man was ministered to by God and God told him, this is what you should do and he doesn't do it, be sure he will not receive Father's blessing. A major bane of the, of, the, of the worship of God today is that people have rejected John chapter 4 and they don't want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. People are interested in the externals of religion. People are interested in externals, externals of religion. And people don't want the Lord to get into them and bring about the transformed life that will walk with God in total submission and so receive the blessings from above. You remember what happened to the children of Israel? when they went to war, when they had those two terrible priests named Ophne and Phineas, who were living in adultery with the women that came to church, who disregarded God because they would take of the sacrifice by force. They would not even wait for God to move first. They were doing everything as they liked. I tell you, on the day that Israel went to war, Israel was defeated and one wise man said we know why we are defeated we should have carried the ark of God along with us and they said that's very good and they brought in the ark and everybody began to shout praise the Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah and the Philistines had the shout and we are worried but one of them said don't be worried we will go and quit ourselves like men and fight. They carried the ark to war. 
But God did not go with them. God did not go with them. Those are the things we call externals of religion. We've carried the ark. Everybody, they are going. The ark, the ark, the ark, the ark. The ark was a symbol of God's presence. But it will be that symbol when everything was in order. When things went wrong, God will abandon the box. And it will become an ordinary box. The same thing happens in the church. When you come to church, from the pulpit to the gate, the Spirit of God must be in control. If he is denied authority, then we can hold his service. As long as we know that God is not there. We will do everything we normally do, but God will never be there. So the ark of God was even carried away. And those two adulterous priests were slain. And Eli, their father, died. They couldn't get the blessing because they were living in adultery. When you live in adultery, you won't get blessings. When you live in adultery and you live in fornication, you don't get blessings. You can jump as much as you like. You can dance as much as you like. You can preach better than Apollos. It doesn't matter. When you live in adultery like Hophni and Phinehas, you don't get the blessing. And when your man friend is in the church with you, and your woman friend is in the church with you, and these are things we have seen over and again. We have seen in some churches where the woman's man friend is a pastor. We have seen in other places where the woman is going to sleep with a deacon. We have seen all types of things. And they gather together and begin to sing and jump and clap and give themselves signals with their eyes. Because they know what they are doing. And they think that God is a fool. He's not a fool. Was he not the one who said, let the wheat and the tares grow together until harvest, until harvest, until harvest. When he looks from heaven today, as we are here in his presence, in this sanctuary, he knows the wheat. He knows the tares. That's why the Bible says, Paul speaking to Timothy, the Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Because if you don't, if you don't, you are not worshipping him. You can't worship him in iniquity. So Cain couldn't get blessing. He was a murderer. Abraham got the blessings. Because when God called him, God said, get up, he got up. God said, leave your family, he left his family. God said, leave your kindred, he left his kindred. God said, follow me, he followed him. Without even knowing where he was going. The Bible says so. He followed God. All the way. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I've got to do is to follow. The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I've got to do is to follow. Strength for the day. Mine all the way. And all that I need for tomorrow The Lord knows the way through the wilderness All I've got to do is to follow Follow, follow I will follow Jesus Anywhere, everywhere I will follow him, follow, follow, I will follow.
Lord Jesus. And in my hands, I will follow you. So Abraham followed. Not knowing where he was going. But he believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. And Abraham received the blessings. As Abraham was receiving the blessings, he gave back to Ishmael, and then he gave back to Isaac. Ishmael was not the promised seed. And in due time, one event led to another, and Abraham had to send Ishmael away with some blessings, some. But the real blessings were reserved for Isaac, because in Isaac shall thy name and thy seed be called. Isaac gave birth to Esau and Jacob. The Bible says that Esau was a wild man. If you are a wild man, the blessings will not come to you. If you are a wild man, we have seen some people in the church who behave like wild people. They have failed to submit themselves to the word of God. They have failed to open up themselves to the Holy Spirit. They have refused to show evidence of the new creature. They have refused to show evidence of the transformed life. The new one created new in Christ. They are still behaving, behaving like the old man. Esau was a wild man. He would not receive the blessings. You know when his father made some pronouncement on him when he was weeping and crying. Bless me. Even any bless me is small. He received second grade blessings. Jacob was to walk away with the real blessings. If you sell your birthright as a Christian, your blessing goes with it. If you sell your birthright, if you throw away that thing that makes you a Christian, when a person no longer cares for the word of God and sends himself over to the devil, the Bible says there was no man like Ahab who sold himself to the devil, whose wife Jezebel stirred up. His wife stirred him up. And both of them gave themselves. And you know Jezebel had a background of idol worship, shrines, occult, everything wicked. And she brought them to Israel and established shrine and occultism everywhere. And the king who went to marry wrongly had to give space because that woman was very wicked. If you sell your birthright, you have allowed the devil to lead you astray. Don't talk about blessing. Blessings are not for those who sell their birthright. Blessings are not for Christians who throw away their testimonies. Blessings are not for those who no longer care for the Holy Spirit. Blessings are not for those who know the word of God, but do something else. Live another life. You have to live for God. You have to bring yourself to him. Esau, he wept. The Bible says he wept bitterly. My father, give me anyone, just one. And the father said, your brother has taken the blessings away. Which one will I give you? If we have somebody here who does not care for his Christian testimony, you have been throwing it away, selling it up and down. Your Christian testimony does not exist anymore. The blessings are far away. When Jacob went and came back and Bethel and all this, this is interesting. A 
time came when Jacob was to bless his children. In Genesis chapter 49, Jacob called his sons and said, Gather together, that I may tell you what shall befall you in the last days. Gather together and hear, you sons of Jacob, and listen to Israel your father. And he put on the mantle of a prophet. Because Jacob was a prophet, I, I, I believe you know that. Abraham was a prophet, that they were prophets. His first son came. Reuben, you are my firstborn. My might, the beginning of my strength, the excellency of dignity, the excellency of power. But you are unstable as water, you shall not excel. This was a meeting to pronounce blessings. Listen again. Reuben, you are my firstborn. You are my might. You are the beginning of my strength. You are the excellency of dignity. You are the excellency of power. But you are an unstable fellow. You are unstable as water. You shall not excel. Jacob gathered his children to bless them, but he couldn't bless Reuben. And you defied it. He went to bed with his father's wife. And now it is time for blessing. And he is coming to receive blessing. The father said, No, you will not receive any blessing. You will not. You defied my bed. How do you think you will receive blessing? If you defy my bed, your blessing is gone. You won't receive it, Reuben. And that was all. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Instruments of cruelty are in their dwelling place. Let not my soul enter their council. Let not my honor be united to the assembly. For in their anger they slew a man, and in their self-will they hamstrung an ox. Cursed be their anger, for it is fierce, and their wrath, for it is cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Is that a blessing? <laughs> Jacob had 12 sons. Son number 11, the name was Joseph. When Joseph came on board, he had 10 senior brothers. 10 people who have been in the church before you. 10 people who have been singing the choir before you. 10 people who have been teaching in school before you. 10 pastors before you. Whatever the 10 are. When he looked at them, he saw that they were evil people. He saw that they were evil people. He saw that they were evil people. They were his senior brothers. It was the same father and, let's say, four mothers. He saw that these his brothers were not the right people. And what did he do? He removed himself from them. He removed himself. He was number 11. He removed himself from the 10. If you want God to bless you, when you come into 39 Osusu Road, Assemblies of God, keep your eyes open. All that glitters is not gold, even in the church. Keep your eyes open, be careful. Apostle Paul wrote, he said, when you look in the church, and you see those people that walk contrary to what we taught you, he said, mark them. Mark them. And have nothing to do with them. Mark them, says the apostle, and have nothing to do with them. So Joseph marked his ten brothers and put himself aside. And when God came, whether with a dream or a vision, he did not go to those ten. He went to the man who was ready worshipping him. 
He said, take this. I give you this dream. The man innocently went to his brothers and said, I have a dream. They said, we will kill this man. <laughs> we will kill him. You cannot kill the man that God has designed for something. Oh. You will fight and fight. You will try to delay. You will do everything. But it is in Nigerian politics. I know some of their languages. They will tell you in Nigerian politics, this is an exercise in futility. It won't work. The man had the dream, the man had the dream, there's not anybody could do about it. Why they were still angry? Because they will not repent. They will not repent. There are people in the church who don't want to repent. So they will not repent. Why they were still angry? God brought a second dream and enlarged it and gave to the same man the man he wanted to give him. The man in his innocence went and told his father, mother, and everybody, I have another dream. They said, we must kill this man. <laughs> we must kill him. Joseph received a double portion because a portion was given to Ephraim and a portion was given to Manasseh. Because Joseph was God's man there. If you want God's blessings, arise and be God's man. Arise and be God's woman. There are many things we need to know about our God. He's a great God. I listen to the chorus are singing. Our God is great, I tell you. I will draw this portion of scripture with you in 2 Chronicles chapter 16. 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse number 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. What is he looking for? He's looking for people whose heart is loyal to God. People who are completely submitted, completely dedicated to him. He is going to do something great for those people. You don't need to tell him to do it. He's already coming to do it. And you cannot tell him not to do it. Because he will not listen to you. He must do it. It is in his word. Let me drop another scripture with you. I love this scripture. In the book of Hebrews chapter 1. You will think about it. Let's read from verse 8. But to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Now look at verse 9. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. This is New King James. The other one says you hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even your God, has anointed you. He has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. The other King James says, He has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. What did you do? You loved righteousness. You hated iniquity. God therefore anointed you. And nobody can stop it. Are you looking for Father's blessing? I have given you some of the secrets. When it was time to inspire the land, Moses sent people 
They went and came back, and many of them were giving a wrong report. But Joshua and Caleb gave a report based on faith, and God decided to wipe away everybody from 20 years and above. They will not enter into the land except Joshua and Caleb, because they believed God, and they spoke by faith. They saw the giants, they saw everything, but they saw their God bigger than the giants. My God is bigger than all my problems. He is bigger than everything. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. My God is bigger than all my problems. He is bigger than everything. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. My God is bigger than all the problems. He is bigger than everything. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. My God is bigger, is bigger, is bigger, is bigger, is bigger than everything. God is bigger than any mountain I can or cannot see. And so Joshua got the blessings. All those other ones did not. Joshua and Caleb got it. One day when Saul was on the throne, God called Samuel and said, Fill your horn with oil. Let us go on a journey. We are going to Bethlehem. You are going to anoint a king for me there. This one called Saul. I'm done with him. Done. No more. The man was sitting on the throne. But God was finished with him. The man may be a pastor of a church, but God may be finished with him. The man may be a deacon in the church, but God may be finished with him. The man may be heading an arm of the church, but God may be finished with him. God was finished with Saul. All the nations around, if you ask them, who is the king of Israel? They say Saul. All the Israelites, if you ask them, who is the king of your nation? They say Saul. But God was finished with him. So far as heaven was concerned, Saul was no longer king. He could be king before men. He was no longer king before God. That's the type of God we serve. Samuel, let's go on a journey. They went. Jesse, we have come to offer sacrifice. Bring your sons. They brought the sons to the sacrifice. When the sons of Jesse came, the first one came. And Samuel looked at him and said, this one looks like a king. I wanted to go and anoint him. God said, don't anoint him. I'm not choosing this man. You people look on the outward appearance. I don't look on the outward. I look inside. This man is not a king. That man looked every inch a king. He had all the experience. He had everything that once he came out, he said, that's the king. God said, no, that's not the king. This man will not receive the blessing of being king over my people. He will not. Ha! The second one came. God said, I have not chosen this one. The third one came. God said, I have not chosen this one. All the seven came. God said, I have not chosen any of these. Somewhere asked Jesse, Do you have any other son? 
Because God said something to me. Do you have any other song? He said, oh, there's one. He's in the wilderness taking care of the sheep. This business that I brought us here is serious business. We are here for serious business and that man, we did not consider him worthy to come here. He is taking care of the sheep in the bush. And when Samuel heard that there was one more left, he now had sense. And he said, send for him. We will not sit down here until he comes. Everybody will begin to stand. That is the king. That is the man God has chosen. That is the one that will receive the blessing. All these ones are looking at giants and so on. God didn't know anything about them. What was the difference between the man in the bush and these ones? That man was there worshipping God. That man was there fully surrendered. That man gave himself over to the Holy Ghost. He may have had the same problem, but he was the real man of God in the whole family. Interestingly, he was the last son. All his seven senior brothers, they were not qualified for the blessing. Let me tell you something. You can position yourself so that God will have no option but to bless you. Hear me well. You can position yourself in such a way that God will have no option but to bless you. And you can position yourself in such a way that God will have no option but to jump you and pass. All those seven, he jumped and said, no, not these ones. I need a king for my people. I have come down to choose a king, a man after my own heart. And he got him. You can go on and on through the scriptures and you will see what God is telling his people. And today we are talking of Father's blessing. Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Show evidence that you are a child of God. It's not about office. It's not to come and stand the general superintendent. Yes, thank God, we will respect you, we will honor you, but what do you have to show? Where is evidence that you are a man of the Spirit? Where is evidence that you are heaven bound? Where is evidence that you are in true fellowship with God? After all, a man can be a general superintendent and not have fellowship with God. So you have to show something. Do not live your life in such a way that people will think you are an unbeliever. One of the textbooks we use in the Bible school, the title was, What is the Difference? What is the difference between you and your neighbor whom you say is not saved? What is the difference between you and your kindred that you say are not children of God? What is the difference between you and those people in your village? What is the difference between you and your fellow business people? What is the difference? Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers because you will suffer injury. The yoke of a strong animal and a weaker one does not say this way. It goes across, as you know. And both of them get wounds. If you are a spiritual man, show evidence. If you are a child of God, show evidence. If you are heaven bound, show evidence. If the word of God dwells in you, show evidence. If you surrender to Jesus, show evidence. And God said of Job, there is no man like Job in the whole earth who fears God and hates evil. And God was speaking to the devil. And the devil should know. The devil should know. The devil should know. So you are going to have your testimony before God. 
you have your testimony before men and Satan will also be aware of your testimony. What fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? No. You are looking for blessings from the fact. You cannot walk in unrighteousness and expect God to be pouring blessings on you. Those things don't work. If you get anything, you are getting the crumbs. You will never get the real bread. Jesus is made righteousness unto us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. Every child of God must live and walk in righteousness. Get it right. Do what is right. Abraham was praying in Genesis chapter 18 when you're praying for Sodom and he challenged God. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? He will do right. When God comes again to judge the world, we are told in Acts of the Apostles chapter 17, verse 30 and 31, He's coming to judge the world in righteousness. If you are a child of God, get it right. You can't do wrong things. You can't support evil. You can't side them. You can't promote them. You can't identify with them. No. Because righteousness and unrighteousness have no link. And you want God to bless you. What communion has light with darkness? No. Because once the light appears, the darkness will disappear. And we know it. Jesus is the light of the world. And the same Jesus said, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on here cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under the bushel, but on a table stand, that it may light and give light to all that are in the world. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. And when your life brings glory to your father, your father will bless you. It's automatic. People don't need to say, bless him, Lord, bless him, Lord. No, no. He will bless you because you are bringing glory to his name. What a God has Christ with Belial. Ah, no. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 38, we are told how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost of power, who came about doing good, and he came to destroy all the works of the devil. Destroy all. Jesus and Satan have no agreement whatsoever. He came to set us free. Satan was the one who bound us before, but Jesus has come to set us free. If you live and walk in the liberty by which Jesus has set us free, your blessings are assured. There is nothing anybody can do about it. By the way, you remember that after David had been anointed king and all Israel knew that he was anointed king, all Israel, including Saul, who said with his mouth, I know that you will be king. I know. And yet, he tried to kill David. Every effort made by Saul to kill David failed. They were all failures. He had been anointed, he had been anointed. God had anointed him and he would be king. There was nothing the whole world could do to stop him from being king. He had been anointed. He had been anointed by God. He had been anointed. He had been anointed. So he must rule. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And you have nothing to do with the devil. If you are holding any property of the devil, throw it away. 
You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve Christ and Satan. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve Christ and Satan. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve Christ and Satan. No one can serve two masters. No one can serve Christ and Satan. Make up your mind. Make up your mind. What part as a believer with an unbeliever? No. Come ye that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in our song with sweet accord. Join in our song with sweet accord. And thus, song round the throne. And thus, song round the throne. We are marching. Zion, beautiful, wonderful Zion, we are marching up what to Zion, you're the beautiful city of God. We are marching to Zion. Beautiful, wonderful Zion, we are marching. I have a clear destination as a child of God. I know where I'm going to. Every child of God has a destination. Every child of God has its own brand of eternity. It is an eternity with Christ. Everyone who is outside Christ is not going to Zion. Everyone who is outside Christ is not going to heaven. He is marching to hell. Our destination is not the same. I have my destination. He has his destination. In this my destination, as I stick to it, as I pay full attention to it, my blessings will continue to come. Nobody stops my blessings. Nobody. What agreement has the temple of God with idols? No. I am a son of assemblies of God. I remember one chorus they used to sing when we were small. I will sing it. Aromi le bo lan sa chuku Aromi le bo lan sa chuku Ni ni no ye wa ya di e bi no le jira ka we Aromi le bo lan sa chuku Aromi le bo lan sa chuku Aromi le bo lan sa chuku Nini no ne wanya di e bi no de jira ka we Aromi le bo lan so chuku If you have thrown it away, bring it back If you have thrown that chorus away, bring it back to the church These days they are singing about me being the temple of God. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Know ye not, know ye not, ye are the temple. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Feel the grace, feel the power, feel the glory. Feel the grace, feel the power, feel the glory. Feel 
filled with grace, filled with power, filled with glory. He has a temple of the Holy Ghost, full of grace, full of power, full of glory. Full of grace, full of power, full of glory. Full of grace, full of power, full of glory. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? No. Are you the temple of the Holy Spirit? Does the Holy Spirit dwell in you? Is the Holy Spirit in charge? Is the Holy Spirit in control? Is the Holy Spirit the authority? Is the Holy Spirit the owner of your life? If the Holy Spirit is in charge, if the Holy Spirit is in control, if the Holy Spirit is the authority, if the Holy Spirit is the owner of your life, the blessings of God will come upon you. Nobody can stop it. Nobody. But if you resist the Holy Ghost and grieve the Holy Ghost and quench the Holy Ghost, why are you looking for blessings from on high? Why? Those blessings will not come. The Holy Ghost, this is his time. This dispensation is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. He is the person of the Godhead who is here now. If you resist him, you resist him to your shame. If you grieve him, you grieve him to your shame. If you quench him, you are done the worst you can ever do to yourself. Quenching the Holy Spirit is the worst. When people no longer listen, no longer care what God is saying, and they are doing their own thing, their own way, they are not interested in what the Holy Ghost is saying, let such a man not come and say, I want Father's blessing. He will not get it. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. All this church Jesus came to build the holy church that's what Jesus came to build of God singing it and I loved it. He sang his song this way. I know the Lord has made a way for me. I know the Lord has made a way for and through the land. I know the Lord Oh, <laughs> 
says I will dwell in them I will walk among them I will be their God they will be my people therefore come out from among sinners come out from among unclean people come up from among ungodly people come out from among Christless people be separate Live a separated life. A separated life is the holy life. Holiness is all about separation. Holiness is all about separation. Separate yourself from evil. Separate yourself from sin. Separate yourself from ungodly people. Even in the church, wherever you see them, separate yourself. The race you are running is a personal race you are running a personal race you are running a personal race this heavenly race is a personal race if you want the blessings of the fact separate yourself from evil men and women wherever you find them separate yourself from sin wherever you see it live a holy life unto God I know that's a song that somebody used to sing. Heavenly ways. Heavenly ways. Heavenly ways. Heavenly ways. To meet my redeemer, I'm running the heavenly race. To meet my redeemer, redeemer. unclean things so that I will receive you. Don't take what does not belong to you. Simple. Don't take what does not belong to you, but take is different from touch. So don't touch it. Don't go there. It is not yours. Keep away from it. Stand clean. Be clean. Only oh, the bloody vessels of the Lord. Be clean. Don't go there. It is not yours. It could even be another person's wife. It could be another person's husband. It could be the, the tithe that belongs to God. It could be the offering. It could be the departmental money given to you to keep. Touch not the unclean thing. It is now unclean to you. You want heavenly blessings. You want fatherly blessings. You must come and identify fully with the Father. Then I will be, I will receive you. I will be a father to you. You'll be my sons and daughters. Therefore, because we have all these promises that God says, He will dwell in you. He will walk in you. He will be your God. He will be His people. He will receive you to Himself. He will be a father unto you. You will be sons and daughters to him. Cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. Cleanse yourself from all 
fruitfulness of the spirit perfect holiness in the fear of God cleanse yourself is God ready to bless us yes he is is God ready to bless us yes he is more than ready should we position ourselves so that God will bless us yes shall we come in disobedience and stubbornness and self-will and arrogance and rebellion and be expecting blessings from God no shall we be filled with bitterness and hatred and murder and expect God to bless us no shall we form a league with those we have seen that they hate God they don't love him they don't respect him they don't honor him they don't care for the Holy Spirit should we join them and then be crying and expecting God to bless us no can we look like the owners of the local church every inch a king every inch a big man but in the heart in the heart where God is looking he's seeing terrible things shall we be expecting divine blessings no you may receive the crumbs but the real blessing will not come if I throw away my birthright I don't care for my testimony it doesn't mean anything to me what is my business and later I begin to weep bitterly like Esau is that the way forward no Abraham followed God Abraham left all Abraham submitted Abraham believed God completely and it was so I tell you brethren God is ready to bless us God is ready to bless you you position yourself tell the devil no tell the world no the world system tell the flesh no tell sin no tell death and hell no open up to the word of God open up to the Lord Jesus open up to the Holy Spirit open up to the Father his eyes are going to and fro to show himself strong on behalf of that man or that woman whose heart is stayed on God and when God has seen you he will come down with the blessings and those blessings will remain nothing will take them away for as long as you remain in fellowship with God shall we rise at this moment we want to talk to our Father in heaven we are struggling to let ourselves understand When we come to church, we can come anyhow. But when we come into the house of God, God wants to clean us up completely so that he will then position us to receive his blessings. All types of blessings, they are available. God will continue to pour down upon his people and nobody can stop it. Nobody. Those who feel you should not be blessed, those who think they want to stop it, they will never be able to stop it. Because you have positioned yourself in Christ. And in Christ, in total submission to Him, the blessings must surely come. I want us to take a few minutes now to rededicate ourselves unto the Lord. I beg you, just rededicate yourself to the Lord. Rededicate. We dedicate, we dedicate yourself to God. Do it. We dedicate yourself to God today. And then I'm going to pray. We dedicate. And if you know you've not been living for God, you've been playing pranks on yourself, you've been self-deceived, you've been trying to make people think you are what you are not, you've been trying to make people think you are who you are not, You've been living in pretense and hypocrisy. Come back to the Lord so that we can pray together as children of God. Nata Oye Jay 
Jesus won't run again. Or rather, the church, Nanda Roa Rurini, and I could take Jesus on the day of Monkey Way. Only Jade in a letter, O daughter. Only in a letter, in a letter, in a letter, Jesus, in a letter, in a letter, in a letter, in audience you want to make things right with God today do we have any man or any woman in this audience you want to make things right with God today you want a new chapter to be opened for you today you can come to the altar here yeah? we can pray with you if we have any man or any woman, any elderly man or elderly woman, any young man or young lady, any teenage boy or teenage girl, any boy or girl, you want to make this right with God today so that a new chapter can be opened for you. You can come forward. We shall pray with you if we have such a person here today. We will pray with you that the Lord will start something new in your life today. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new in my life. Do something new in my life. Something new in my life. Something new.
My brethren who are before the Lord, the Lord will continue to bless you. The Lord will continue to bless you. The Lord will continue to bless you. Your blessings will multiply. The Lord will multiply His blessings upon your life. Because you want Jesus to recreate, remove, renew, transform, come again in your life. You want victory over the forces of darkness. You want victory. The Lord will give you that victory today. The Lord will meet you at your point of need today. He's doing great and mighty things for you. You will testify of God's goodness. You will testify of his mercy. You will testify of his visitation. The Lord will open a new chapter for you. The Lord will do it. The Lord will do it for you. The Lord will do it for you. The Lord will do it for you. We'll open a new chapter for you. We'll open a new chapter. For as long as you have decided that you want Jesus to come into your life in a new way today, the Lord is going to do great things for you. You will continue to testify. Your testimony will not stop. Your blessings will continue to increase. They will multiply. They will come in geometric proportion. God will continue to bless you. Thank you, my Father. We are grateful unto you, our Heavenly Father. Behold your children, O God. They want you to do something beautiful in their lives today. They are kneeling before you, Father. We join them in one mind, one heart, and spirit. Lord, go through their lives completely. Everything that needs to be removed, Father, just remove it. Remove it, O God. You have all the power to remove recreate transform renew do something great something outstanding in their hearts and lives in their minds breakthrough something specially outstanding Lord do it for them they will always remember this day that on that day they went forward and say, Jesus, come and take control. From that day, you did something new. Thank you, our Father. Bless them beyond what they think. Bless them beyond what they can imagine. Bless them beyond what they ask. Arise on their behalf. Great and mighty things you will do in their lives, O God. You receive all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, this brethren, go back to your seat. Our Father and our God, we are standing before you today, the day that you made, that we should rejoice and be glad in it. You know this day. You know every one of us. You knew that we shall be in this sanctuary today. Your word has gone forth. I commit every heart into your hand. I pray, O oh God, your word will never return to you void. It must accomplish the purpose for which you sent it forth. You are interested in the souls of men. You don't want any to perish, but that all should have everlasting life. Here we are before you today. Help us, Almighty God. Anyone and everyone in the bondage of the enemy, anyone and everyone in the 
bondage of the enemy coming to our church day after day. Is there anyone in our leadership who is in the bondage of the enemy? Is there anyone in our followership who is in the bondage of the enemy? Any man, any woman in the bondage of the enemy? Oh God, today is another day. I pray that the Holy Spirit will break through the heart of such a man or such a woman, such a family, such a group of people. Spirit of the living God, may you break forth so that people will be set free. People will be delivered from all the clutches of the devil. And then we have a ringing testimony in the lives of the glory of your name. Do it for us in the name of Jesus. I pray for spiritual blessings on this local church from the pastor to the last child in the womb. Oh God, today it is blessings from you that are very important to us. Bless us with spiritual understanding. Open our spiritual eyes, our heart, our mind, everything about us. Oh Lord, anyone who has been walking about in spiritual darkness, anyone who has been walking about in spiritual blindness, anyone who has been walking about in spiritual ignorance, Lord, today we pray on this day of Father's blessings, right from the throne in heaven. Lord, open our eyes that we might regain our spiritual sight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray for anyone living in immorality, sexual immorality. The devil has bound him, the devil has bound her, the devil has bound them. Sexual immorality. Adultery, fornication, rape, homosexuals, and all the ick. Lord, if there's such a person here today, I cry out unto you. Break the chains of immorality for the love of your people. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, let there be liberty. Let people be free. Let immorality not bind anybody again. Oh God, set your children free from this wicked spirit. All thoughts of sexual uncleanness, which are spreading all over the world today. Lesbians and all of them. Father, we pray, set them free in Jesus' name. I pray for the physically sick who have been sick for long. Oh God, I remember the other day the man who died had been having a stroke for 14 years. I remember the other one had a stroke for 5 years. Is there anyone in this assembly who have been down with stroke? Who have been down with any type of illness? One month, six months, one year, six years, ten years. We have been struggling, laboring, weeping, crying, in pain. Today, we pray for healing for the throne room in heaven. In the name of Jesus. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Bless your people with healing. Bless us with physical healing. Bless us with spiritual healing. Bless us with financial healing. In the name of Jesus. I pray for the business of your people. Those whose businesses have not been doing well for whatever reason. Today, oh God, I pray that we find favor in your sight. And you come, oh God, visit us. 
in our distance. Whatever may have been the obstacle, whatever may have been the barrier, whatever may have been the stumbling block, whatever the enemy used to block our distance. Today, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you take it out of the way. In the name of Jesus. Bless our businessmen. Bless our business women. Bless the businesses of your people. We shall see our businesses enjoy multiplier effect in the blessings that are coming down from heaven. And so it shall be in Jesus' name. I pray for families that are struggling. They have no peace. They have no joy. They have no unity. There is quarrel. There is trouble. There is fighting. There are abuses. There are dirty language. Oh God. They have lost their joy. They have lost their peace. They have lost their happiness. But they are here today. Such families. When the enemy has come in and have been manipulating them, they don't enjoy the joy. And the blessedness that come from heaven, we pray for them today, O King of Glory, that you will come down into the families of your people. Restore the joy. Restore the peace. Restore the unity. Restore the happiness. In the name of Jesus. I pray for our young girls who are looking up to you. They want to be married, O God. And for whatever reason, they are not married. And it appears as if their time is passing by. But Lord, we are believing you today. Oh God, in your mercy. Oh God, in your kindness. Oh God, in your goodness. Oh God, we cry to you.
what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but loses his own soul? God is ready to break every debt of wrath that the devil has put to ensure that he remains in slavery. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, my God.